Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Green here with no more news.org. Today is Sunday, September 20th, 2020. And it looks like my YouTube is not working. Steve. Oh. <clears throat> I'm well, here with Steven I... Ben Denoon from Israeli News Live, but it looks like we're just on D Live. The the YouTube didn't start up. Well, that's because they know we're coming on together. You can't have two 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 guys of trouble on at the same time. So my I stream with Restream, so I can go to D Live and to YouTube at the same time. Restream just changed the way they're doing their YouTube thing, so I had to sign back in. I see that it says there's 225 people watching there right now, but it looks like it's not working. That's okay. <clears throat> if you if you're able to upload it later, we can always just do it and uh, if it records for you. Well, we are recording. Great, because we but, don't want to disappoint the 200 people that are listening. Exactly. I know that's what I'm thinking is that I could just do a, do a restart. No, they can't see the video. I'm, okay. How about if it's going to D Live? They're listening. Ex okay. If it goes to D Live, I'm just going to drop the D Live link in the YouTube chat. And then I guess we're just going to have to do this on D Live. I could upload it to YouTube later and just cut this part out. Okay. <clears throat> That's very unfortunate. Very weird too, because if you look here, it says, here, I can share this with people. It's, uh, it says there's 306 people watching. So it should be working, but it's not. Mm. Anyway, Steven Ben Denoon is joining me today. Thanks for being here, Steve. I wanted to bring you on. You've been censored on YouTube lately, and I wanted to get your take on everything that's going down with the Abraham Accords and the peace deals and uh, Trump giving the, the keys to America to Netanyahu. So thanks for being here. Thank you, Adam, for having me on. And uh, yeah, we also, besides getting knocked off of YouTube and Yana's channel getting no knocked off, I just got a message from my webmaster that our website, they went into two different attacks, DD, what is it, DDoS, mm -hmm. as well as some other type of attack. Over 150,000 attempts to hack into the site, and then they were sending junk mail of the tune of about 70,000, or junk things onto my website about the tune of 70,000 per minute. <clears throat> And they said, that, uh, yeah, there, I, I have a feeling that, you know, Israeli News Live must be really upsetting some folks over in Israel right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they don't like us having the name. So they wanted to be able to try to get in there and change all of that. They probably get more upset with you than they do even with Gentiles who talk about uh, Zionism. I, I would assume... They, and the 75, almost 75 million views you've had on your channel, I'm sure they're not too happy about that. Was it was it a, one of your videos or one of Yana video, Yana's videos that uh, has been getting the censorship lately? The first one that knocked us off was the one I did on Beirut. The second one uh, was actually an older video. And I forget, I think that was one that her and I did together. And... Uh, and they would not even allow us to do a uh, to do an appeal automatically right out the gate. No appeal uh, permitted, and uh, they removed that one. And then, of course, Shana's channel, Rise Up Children of God, she got struck down back to back. And I think it was one with Deborah Tavares was one of the ones that they took down on her, and I forget what the other one was. But you know, ever ever since this issue came up with Amir. Um, they have been majorly on the attack. And and the whole thing... Explain Amir for people that don't know a little bit. Yeah. Amir, you know, we've always kind of kept our distances apart. And Amir is, uh, he is a Israeli, uh, supposed to be a Christian man that's uh, uh, very much a Zionist. And uh, part, used to be in the IDF, from what I understand, was an officer in the IDF. 
And uh, but he is now has a very rapidly growing ministry, but it's very pro-Zionist, pro-war uh, type of channel. And you know, I, I don't, I'm not against him when he's trying to win souls for Christ. I'm okay with that. But you know, I realize the agenda is completely different than what we stand for. And uh, and he reached out to me early on in his ministry, uh, trying to get on with us. He he was actually living in Switzerland at the time. Uh, told me he was working for a banking institution there and wanted me to meet us back when I lived in Europe. It's been quite a few years ago. And uh, But he went on the attack against Yana because Yana was exposing things that were going on over in Israel. Nothing against him. We've never bothered with him. you know. And then he comes out and said she's some kind of wild, deranged woman and stuff, really speaking evilly of her. So she made a video defending herself and that was the first video on her channel that caused her to get a strike was because she defended herself against what he was doing. Uh, wasn't long after that, uh, and then he lied, by the way, he lied to his people. We saw a place in Facebook when he posted about this, this and said that, because he tells his people on Facebook that we attacked him. Hmm. Never mentioned anything, Adam, about what he had done to Yana. Yeah. And that she was only doing a video, you know, defending herself against his uh, his uh, his his attack against her. But as he posted that to his people and just outright lied to them, it's the first time I've ever uh, addressed him like this. I actually went in there and I said, clearly, you have misled your people. You know, I wouldn't have a problem if he said, you know, well, Yana went against him, you know, and he had said this about her to start with. As long as he did it, you know, neutral and fair, he could, I don't care, you know. But when I saw him outright lie to the people, I called his hand on it, right, to all of his, his people. And then he had quite a few other people coming in there saying, that's true. You know, you, you've outright lied about this because you're the one that attacked her. So... Uh, you know, if he disagreed with her, we wouldn't care. That that wouldn't matter. I mean, because every somebody always somebody's going to disagree with you, Adam. We know that. That's not a problem. I don't, uh, you know. But when you're going around calling somebody mentally deranged and stuff like that, making them out like they're some kind of psychopath, uh, just because they will not support Noahide laws and will not support the Zionist wars that are that Israel is doing and overthrowing all the countries in the Middle East and also. Uh, Israel interfering. They, they talk about Russian collusion. It's not Russian collusion. It's Israeli collusion in our elections. And they only blame it on Russia to use Russia as the scapegoat. Uh, so, but any, at any Wouldn't rate... Would you, you know, agree, though, that like Putin and Chabad and a lot of those oligarchs and uh, that, that mafia group that is connected with Israel did, was uh, colluded also? Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but what's interesting is they Russia does it more uh, sly, and, and I have the evidence on Russia already. Uh, the whole thing with Ukraine, I knew about Trump's involvement with uh, with President Putin. Th those two guys were pretty much in the background while their their little thugs were working in behind the scenes. Uh, they, you know, when 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 Trump's friend uh, Bill, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, gosh. One of his campaign advisors, they had bought that telecoms communication company over in Ukraine, and this was to sway the election over there to to, uh, to to go the way they wanted to. But they were working with the Russians on this. And, of course, this was all coming down the pipe later to, for Russia to be colluding in, in U.S. elections as well to help Trump to get into power. And uh, but but the point is, is everybody's all up in arms over the fact Russia getting involved in our elections and swaying opinion. But nobody says anything about ADL. And uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't go down that hole there. I don't want to cause you to get. Knocked well, we're not even on chance. YouTube right now. But, yeah, the ADL also I think I had an article up, but, but maybe not. Uh, Sheldon Adelson's giving Trump 50 million for the upcoming election right now. So, yeah. Exactly. And, and, you know, Adam, here's the here's the thing. Even regardless, though, I'll, I'll tell you, you want to people really want to know how much collusion goes on. Let me tell you the facts on this here. I got a I got a message the other day right out of the Capitol. Um, and it was actually I was in a, in a uh, conference and I was told then Trump will be the president of the United States. 
And I said, well, it reminds me of the old days, you know. So I guess, you know, we, we find out in advance who's going to be the president. So, oh, yeah, still just like it was in the old days, still the same way today. You know, it's, it's these big uh, puppet masters here that control who's going to be the next president. And so I asked who was the deciding factor in this him being president. Kissinger was the answer. Mm. And said, well, you know, Steve, he said, you know, Kissinger is the one that wanted Obama in. So we put Obama in. Uh, he ran Obama for two terms, and they put Trump in because uh, Obama's whole, uh, sole purpose as president of the United States was to galvanize the the Arabic world as part of the New World Order, or as the people in the Pentagon call it, a one-world government. They don't call it a New World Order, but a one-world government. And he said to me, you know, of course, Obama did his job. He did what he was uh, supposed to do. And then they brought Trump on in order to bring about Israel to put Israel on the on the map there and really put Israel in the forefront of everything and to galvanize uh, the evangelical community to be on Trump's side uh, and they've done a very good job at it and as I was told it doesn't matter this of course I already know these things but uh, from years ago when I worked intelligence but as it was reminded to me it does not matter how the people vote even if there's not enough votes for that candidate, they will make sure that he still gets in one way or the other. Could you elaborate a little bit more on the, the Kissinger Trump situation? Because it's, it's funny, you know, all the people that are like, you know, anti New World Order and then still like love Trump. They, they seem to not care how close he is with with Kissinger. Well, here's the thing. It comes down to, to, to this whole issue here. I mean, even the, Israel being created as a state, things like that. Kissinger, of course, is nothing but a criminal in, in, to begin with. But all the there, there. Well, let me put uh, let me back up for a second here and say like this here. In March of this year. Uh, 2020, I'd gotten a, a, an emergency email saying that Trump was no longer president of the United States, that he had been replaced, he would still work as the head or the CEO of a dying corporation. But when, when that was said to me, I, I reached out, I needed, I wanted to have a private interview so we could discuss what was going on. I was told then that there were six men that were running the nation and Trump now had the right to vote with them because it's more like a board, but he no longer was over the military and military decisions. And uh, there were other key areas that they could not go into that he didn't no longer had, that he no longer had power to. So I asked the question, who then is running the, the country? If it's really, if Trump is not running the country, who is running the, the country? And I was told that out of the six men, five of them, you would not know their names in the first place. And so it really does not matter, and they would not divulge the name of those. But as far as who was really running the country out of the one that, that I would know, he said it was Kissinger. He said he basically steers the entire nation on where it goes. Then, of course, some small talk. We talked about, you know, Kissinger's age and stuff like that. And, you know. You think Kissinger more so than, like, Kushner and, and Netanyahu and the, the APEC, Sheldon Adelson influence? Well, there could be some of those ties in there as well. I, I do believe, and I have asked, but I've never been given a straight answer on it when it comes to Jared Kushner and Ivanka. But when... I specifically asked about when they signed the anti-Semitic bill for, for it, basically for Israel's sake, it was Jared Kushner and Ivanka that led President Trump out into that signing while uh, the Vice President Pence sat on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. To me, Adam, that, I mean, that's, that, that's, well, that's like a, a, not a thousand words for a picture, but a million words could be said about that. It definitely you know, seems like Pence is subordinate to Kushner. And I think Kushner was actually the one that went and met Pence. And, and they were going to give the VP to Chris Christie. But then that last minute, they wanted Pence instead. Kushner was involved with that. 
And I can believe that. And I have, you know, there's been some chatter that he will actually take over after Trump comes out. Mm -hmm. Um, In fact, I was asked by uh, Congressman McKinney, former Congressman McKinney, about that very question there. She said, do you think that uh, that Jared Kushner and his wife will actually be running the United States after Trump's next term? Uh, and, And the only reason she used Trump's next term as a as a po- as a realistic scenario is because I'd already shared with her the information that he would be president of the United States. Uh, and, and in a way, I don't think that really surprised Cynthia. She knows how the game works. Um, but I told her, I don't know. I have asked about that. Will they be put in place? I think even though I've not been given an affirmative on that, I think the fact that America will be totally brought down from what I'm being told that it will be basically destroyed the nation will be destroyed. Um, there, there has also been discussion amongst Democrats and also, as I've been told, some rogue Republicans uh, in Washington, D.C., about using a false flag event on November the 2nd when this uh, asteroid is supposed to have a near, near pass. Some believe they, it will actually hit the Earth. But, uh, but I was told that... Uh, from Pentagon sources there that that asteroid, even if it does hit the earth, it would not have even the the impact of that other one in Russia a few years back. It would be less, it'll be dramatic, but less dramatic than that one there. You you know, I've been seeing you cover some of the asteroid news and and I've been seeing uh, that reported in a bunch of places recently that there's supposed to be some, some near earth stuff going on. But, um, a November 2nd uh, attack, it, who do you think they're going to blame it on? Uh, white, white supremacists? Well, here's, here's what it looks like it's going to be. It, from some of the things that it's been shared with me, and I've got to be careful in how I kind of word some of this, Adam, because uh, this was actually, I was cautioned on how I present this, if, if I even if I did. Um, but it would be the left that would initiate the false flag event and um, and that they would want to do it to try to derail the election process. I can see the right being the one that really wants to derail the election process. Uh, but Trump, there I've been told that there is a possibility that they could also utilize this opportunity to make it appear as if something happened to the president. Although they just, they just will. sent some uh, rice in, in the mail to the president. You think that's uh, yeah, some that's kind of that. pre-election uh, setup, mo- something more to it? How stupid would somebody have to be to think that the president's going to open mail in the first place? It, well, that's true. But there again, I am told that there are so many things that go on on a daily basis that we never hear about in the first place. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I actually mentioned on our channel the other day, and I'd never mentioned this before, was that back in the 90s, uh, or no, I think it was actually in the 80s, maybe it was early 90s, I forget what year it was, but there was actually a nuclear dirty bomb in New York City. Uh, and it was set to go off. They only had about three hours to get that bomb out of that city, and they had no way to defuse that bomb in time. So the, bo- the bomb was actually loaded onto a vessel, taken out the sea, and dropped about two miles down into the ocean and no one was ever told about it that never made media and it it was these are the type of events that they go through on a regular basis with threats threats to president's life vice president it doesn't matter which president is there and of course you know some of the information i have on this is people that have been there through multiple presidents uh, and so, therefore, it's not neither here nor there which president is just the way it goes. And uh, so, this particular scenario that they're looking at trying to that, that, that they're looking to bring about now, uh, it will either cause a postponement of election if they do do this type of attack. Uh, and what would really help to create that civil unrest and civil war would be. If, a, if it appears to be that something happened to President Trump, but I was assured that he would be safe and that he would actually be taken by uh, underground train from D.C. to Colorado. A lot of people don't know we have a train system from there to there. 
All right, well, let's get into this uh, Abraham Accords. Um, we have here an opinion from Jason Greenblatt, former Middle East envoy. The Abraham Accords are sanctification of God's name. Do you agree with that statement? Is this a sanctification? No. It, he, listen, and where he's taking that from is from... Um, uh, there, you could argue it two different ways, but it's actually taken from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, where God would sanctify his name. And he tells us specifically how he would sanctify his name. And that would be when the house of Israel actually came home, back to the promised land. That was fulfilled 2,000 years ago in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 36, uh, which also fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy, where it says, uh, only even though Israel, uh, the house of Israel would be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant would return. And we find that Peter mentions this uh, in, uh, I think Paul writes the book of Acts, but Peter's the one that's talking there. And he talks about all these different people that came to Israel from these different nations. And they were Judeans, not Jews. It's actually the word is used as Judeans. And, uh, but we find in verse 36 that it was the house of of Israel. So the house of Israel has already come home, and therefore the sanctifying of God's name, according to Ezekiel 36, was, was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. So the state of Israel today has nothing to do with the house of Israel coming home, or these but, Abrahamic but, but in the Zionist worldview, they want to get all the Abrahamic faiths together, have them worshiping the chosen people, following the Noahide laws, rebuilding the temple. Well, here, here's a bombshell for you on that one right there, okay? Two things. One, if you look at the prophecy of uh, Daniel 11, Daniel clearly says in verse 14 that the sons, the angel, angel Gabriel speaking to Daniel, said that the, son, the sons of the violent of your people will try to establish the vision. That's clearly, Adam, what the Jewish state is trying to do. And of course it is, you know, through violence, they are trying to make it look like these, these prophecies that have, which many of them have already been fulfilled. I don't say they all have been fulfilled, but many of them have been. They're trying to make it look as if they are coming to pass when in fact they're not. Uh, so this whole, whole thing with the Abrahamic accord, which is another interesting thing in itself, uh, they bring in the United Arab Emirates, they bring in Bahrain, and at the same time, the United Arab Emirates leader was speaking on the sidelines saying that, yeah, we signed the deal because the Americans are going to give us the F-35, <laughs> and yeah, we're willing to help them out on Iran. So this is really not a peace accord, it's a war accord, and that's what they're doing. They're using this peace initiative, or this Abrahamic accord, in order to prepare their coalition to go against Iran. And that's what they're doing this for. It has nothing to do with peace. It's all about war. Just as Daniel said, the, the sons, it actually says, uh, which means the sons of the violent among your people will try to establish the vision. I, I like the way you phrase that, that this isn't a peace agreement, this is a war agreement. And uh, I've, I've got a good clip to play about uh, Gog and Magog in a second here. We have APEC saying it's a new era. They're trying to set, they're calling it Netanyahu's circle of peace, this alliance to, uh, I guess, uh, face off against Iran. Um, this is a video I watched from Leland Jones. I'm not sure if you're familiar with his channel, but he covers a lot of uh, uh, end times Zionist prophecy. I thought this was interesting. Let me play this real quick here. This is Netanyahu and, and Trump going off script a little bit. At least they try to make it appear that it's going off script. To discussing this in detail with you, Mr. President, because I think that if we work together, we have a shot. And we have been discussing that, and it is something that is very different, hasn't been discussed before. And it's actually a much bigger deal, a much more important deal in a sense, uh, it would take in many, many countries, and it would cover a very large territory. So, uh, I didn't... Many countries, a very large territory. All of our politicians, Kushner, Trump, Greenblatt, Friedman, they're all spending all of their time over there setting up Israel's Zionist New World Order. 
Well, <clears throat> here's the here's the thing, Adam. Several things that I can share with you on this, and and remind me to come back to the Mahadi in just a minute, so I don't forget my thought on that. But um, on July the 16th, I had gotten an email from a good friend of mine who is very his whole family is very much involved with uh, uh, Israeli intelligence. And he was sharing with me then that they were soon going on yet another lockdown. And he said, it's not really the China virus. That's the way he calls it, the China virus. Uh, he said, but we're going to say it's the China virus. And because he said, in reality, what's happening, we're going to be going to war. And it, he said, most likely we're going to be fighting Iran, Hezbollah, and he mentions Yemen. So when you see the lockdown, just keep that in mind. That's more than likely what we're going to be dealing with. So now this is the same man that had given me the information that Hezbollah was going to be given a message and there would be a tactical nuke would be used in that message. And then, of course, 10 days later, we end up having the Beirut blast, mm -hmm. which, by the way, I think was kind of the. The, the factor to bring about fear in these other Arabic nations and joining up with Israel after they seen that Israel is capable, uh, and maybe I should say alleged, allegedly Israel is capable of sending a message uh, that can have very profound effects. Then we had uh, the other issue, going back to uh, what I was going to mention to you to start with as well, right after the situation happened in Beirut, uh, I spoke with a source that I have, and I can't really say where that source is from, but I spoke with a source on that to find out what was really going on in Beirut. And, uh, and, and was Israel behind this blast? And I was told that right now, what they were dealing with is that there was a country that I could that they could not mention in the Middle East that was heavily involved in destabilizing all the different Arab nations and the Arab the different factions within the Arabic community. And the purpose and the goal for this was to cause them to come very close to the brink of civil war, but they didn't want them really to become all the way to civil war, but they wanted them to blame one another. Okay, like in the case of Lebanon, the Lebanese were blaming Hezbollah. Hezbollah was blaming the Lebanese. And the Hezbollah did not want to blame Israel because they knew they were keeping the bombs there. So therefore, they went on a blame game back and forth. But I was told this is being done throughout the Middle East, bringing about these close calls of civil war. And it was because they had the Mahdi already in waiting. Uh, and that at the proper time, this little country in the Middle East that they would not name would then uh, bring out the Mahdi for these Arabic nations, and he would stop the countries from going against each other and bring about world peace. But at the same time, Adam, we're hearing that Israel is claiming that they've already got the Messiah, and they're meeting with the Messiah right now. So it sounds like to me this new world order and one world religion is in full gear. The Pope has already surrendered over his, his once alleged idea that he was the vicar of Christ, he surrendered that crown and placed himself up underneath the rabbis of Israel. And now he's just a good Noahide is what he's become. So I see the whole setup of this new world order coming about. And if there was ever a fulfillment of that Daniel prophecy, the violent among your people are going to try to establish the vision. Luckily, it does say they will stumble, but we're well under our well underway. Another... Another day, another country announces that they're moving their embassy to Jerusalem. What do you think they're going to do? What, what is their, their end game with all these embassies in Jerusalem? Why are, why are they so to obsessed me, with it? Because Jerusalem will be the headquarters for the New World Order. If they're going to try to establish the vision, they got to make everything look biblical. And uh, when the scripture says the law will come out of Jerusalem... Therefore, they take this in a natural sense, that Jerusalem must be the headquarters of a, of a, of a one-world government. They don't realize that even the, uh, as we talked about privately a little bit about Qumran uh, before we came on, Qumran, the Qumran community believed in the Melchizedek priesthood, that it would 
supersede that of the Levitical priesthood. And so therefore, they believe that the Melchizedek priesthood would be the Messiah would come out of that. So therefore, when Jesus came, he was the fulfillment of the law came out of Jerusalem. But the Jewish people don't see that because they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. So therefore, they have to manufacture uh, the prophecy to make it look good. And that's exactly why then you have the embassies moving to Jerusalem. And you'll find that the Arabic uh, countries, their embassies will end up going over to the Palestinian side of Jerusalem. And the uh, non-Arabic countries will end up going over to the, uh, the eastern side, which is where, the, where Israel has control. And just like, for example, and even uh, I think it was Turkey back when this was going on and they were making they were all upset over the u.s moving their embassy to, to israel to jerusalem then the turks said we're going to move our embassy then to east jerusalem and another a couple of other countries that were arabic said we're going to move our, our embassies to east jerusalem and people were like oh they're you know this is terrible they're just doing that to, to make fun of israel no it's part of the plan it doesn't matter which side because they're going to manufacture the sanhedrin will rise to power, they will replace the United Nations, and that's what they believe will be fulfilling prophecy. And you think it'll be this, the, like the first 70 nations to move their embassy and to uh, go down to the little synagogue and sign the papers like Bolsonaro and Pompeo and all the world leaders are doing? I think that's exactly what's going to happen, Adam. It's just a matter of time. And uh, the only thing that I still uh, am very curious about is that one little sentence that says, but they shall stumble. What's going to be the stumble? What's going to happen that's going to derail this process? Will it be that the people finally begin to wake up? I mean, look over there in South America. What was it? Was Maybe it was Honduras. I forget which country it was, but uh, Israel basically went in there and totally collapsed the country because the president had thrown the Israeli government, Israeli people out. He used, they used to have visa-free come to, to, to his country. Uh, he had to flee the country, went to Mexico, because uh, the Mossad had sent all their agents in and overtook the country. So, but if you don't go along with the program, they just overthrow your nation. That's right. They're using the power of America to, to say, you want the technology? You want to be on our good side? Are you with us or are you going to be against us? Are you a uh, Noahide or are you an Amalek, basically, is the choice. Do you uh, consent to your enslavement and your subordinates, or uh, are you going to be destroyed, basically? And that's very true, Adam. And the, and the sad thing is, when it comes to the United States, um, they're done with America. Uh, I was told that straight up by uh, people I know in Israel that they're done with America. China will be the next military superpower and they will work with China. And uh, and Russia, well, they will use Russia to help bring this nation down along and, with China. And who helped build up China was Kissinger was instrumental in that. So that's interesting. Yes, not okay, to mention play. back, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, let, let's play, uh, I just wanna make sure we got the rest of this little clip here and then I got another thing to show you. I didn't know you were going to be mentioning that, but that's now that you did. I think it's a terrific thing. And I think we have some pretty good cooperation from people that in the past would never, ever have even thought about doing this. So we'll see how that works out. Okay. Okay. It's a much. So it's such a big deal. It kind of seems like they try to really hype up the importance of everything they do. Um, so this is the next thing I wanted to show you. You'll find this interesting, maybe. Remember the, the old temple coin that came out shortly after they moved the embassy to Jerusalem yes. and they opened it? You have the temple on the back, Trump and Cyrus on the front, and the, three Abra uh, the temple coin in three Abrahamic languages, Hebrew, English, and uh, Arabic. Check out the bird up here, the, the dove. We got the dove there. And then now we got yeah, the, new, the new coin that just came out, the Abraham Accord Peace Treaty. And we've got the dove. It's, where is it? At the very top here again. What, what do you think that dove oh. signifies? 
Well, you know, the, the dove signi signifies peace, and it's often used in Christian circles amongst the evangelical community. Uh, but what I find interesting is, as you probably have already seen as well, Adam, is the syringes that are involved mm -hmm. in this particular coin here. Uh, and doesn't seem like anybody catches that. But then you also have space. You have satellite technology there. You have all kinds of subliminal messages here that do people really realize the significance for this? And why the heartbeat? You know, why the heartbeat? This this is very provocative. Um, and, of course, Trump's name's going to be on it. So, hey, he's happy about it. <laughs> so I saw this. This is from Leland Jones's video. I was just talking about a second ago. Here's Trump with the, the white dove. You know, I, I've been speculating that they're going to declare Kushner as the Moshiach, which he's instrumental in this, uh, this all this peace stuff too. It, it, most powerful guy in the White House next to Trump, many people say. But he believes that they're going to say Trump is the Antichrist figure, and he he pointed to this article by Rosenbaum with the the white dove. What do you think? Wow. Are you on? Uh, do you lean towards Trump or Kushner being the? Uh, their Moshiach. As far as the Antichrist figure, the fake Moshiach, I would I would lean towards Kushner before Trump by far. But what bothers me is if this rabbi is claiming he's talking to the Messiah, is he actually talking to Jared Kushner? You know, where this is reported? really going to be interesting. I, I I've seen that before. I saw you did a video on that. Where, where was that reported that this uh, latest, that they're talking to the Messiah again? Was that breaking Israel news? I think it was breaking Israel news. They're the ones that normally pop that stuff out, uh, which they're very, very much on with the agenda. Uh, complete Noahide uh, <laughs> journal, I guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similar to Begley and... Uh, Yehuda Glick and in, in those circles, they are, they are really oh, marching yeah. forward with this. And, you know, and that's so sad too because how can you not see the handwriting on the wall? And uh, and, and some of the things that have been done with Yehuda Glick and, and Begley on his on his channel and stuff, you know, I, I'm just I'm blown away by these things, and, and, and it just really it bothers me. It really the, bothers me. Because the Christians that support this are knowingly supporting the Antichrist, even in their worldview, correct? Well, here's the thing. You would think they would know, and but I am amazed at how many Christians are just really dumbfounded by all of this. And I think, though, a lot of this, so Adam, has to do with the years of infiltration in Christianity. Uh, there have been many, many Jewish infiltrations into Christianity. Uh, we had the Darby, we had the Schofield uh, commentaries of Bibles that were written. Uh, everything was put in place because people forget that the Chabad organization, just like that of the Vatican, they don't think in days, months, and weeks. They think in centuries in advance uh, of what's going to come down the pipe. And this is why they, they basically, they diluted Christianity, and then they brought in another form of a Zionist view, something that was never believed by the church fathers. They had believed most of these passages, like Zechariah, etc., uh, Hosea, all these prophecies that everybody's putting in in the future as to being those that were fulfilled years ago. And for myself, I have been trying to undo all the damage I had done myself from teaching a lot of the same types of, of doctrine. Uh, so it's been a lot of work going back and studying the Hebrew on it and to see what really was said. Did it already happen? If it happened, can I prove that it happened? Uh, and I did that not by going and studying the early church fathers or even those that already knew that that was true. I went back and I studied it from the original languages for myself, cross-referencing uh, every documentation I could come across to see. And that's when I really began to find out, you know, we've been living a lie in Christianity. Someone just sent me an email today from the uh, this one woman 
running a, a children's class for uh they I'll, I'll show I'm, i'll bring it up in a second but i just realized we are streaming live on youtube my watch page wasn't working but there's almost two thousand people watching us right now live on youtube so we uh we do have an audience we're not just uh talking to ourselves so that's that's awesome thanks everybody for being here what do you think of this um <clears throat> on the white house celebrating this uh this holiday oh my gosh this is just this like Rosh Hashanah? this is just this is just a normal day at the white house is what it looks like to me oh my gosh all the little social distancing mm -hmm. Uh, most of them wearing their mask, which is nothing but ultra, uh, MK ultra. Uh, I think it, to me, it's a sign of muzzling the ox. <laughs> you, you know, I, I'm so. going to do this. I think next weekend I'm going to go out on the street and do interviews and ask people, do they want to, uh, are they going to get the vaccine when it comes out? And do they think it should be mandatory and get people's, uh, random results that should be a little interesting social experiment to take a poll on that. Absolutely, it would be, Adam. You know, because, ay, ay, ay. It, you'd have to be nuts to take this vaccine. So, uh, you know, the reason I checked YouTube is because I wanted to do this on DLive because this is a little sketchy to cover on YouTube, but I'm going to touch on it. We'll have to be real careful, okay, Steve? Because this is the, uh, the right, mystical... I'll the mystical taboo issue we're not allowed to cover on YouTube. So Dr. Brown, you know, our friend Dr. Brown tweeted out the other day that the new study that was done that some some percentage of the world or the U.S. doesn't believe in the, the, the mystical six million number. And he goes, how is this possible? And, and I responded and said, people aren't buying into the Gamatria mystical number. And then he blocked me and then tweeted out some stuff about people denying, denying things. And here's an article from the New York Jewish Week, The Joy of Six by Ravi Brenner. He says the Jubilee, Jubilee year returns Jews to their land, quote, you shall return every man to his possession, every man to his family. The Zohar notes that Teshuvah is written defectively, missing the letter Vav, hinting at our return and the reclaiming of sovereignty over the land of Israel. Minus six. So uh, the mystical six, six million, there's no disputing this. This is what rabbis and gematri and Kabbalists believe. This is a the Meisel Museum. It's a Holocaust memorial. You can see here on, on the stone, look a little closer. We have the mystic the Kabbalah Gamatria mystical number of the six and the significance for the rebirth and the atonement and the burnt offering. So that was enough to get Dr. Brown to block me. You know, I, I guess he takes offense to the what these rabbis are saying. He takes offense when we notice uh, Gamatria significance going on. And it's not me that made I couldn't have made this up if I tried. This is what they're saying. What do you think? No, it's true. Without getting too far into it and getting my channel shut down, what do you think? Okay. Well, I, about Gematria in were, general, maybe. I'm just putting it on there. And, and, and Gematria, this is the whole thing. This is very much known in Jewish circles mm -hmm. that this is where we come with this number. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can't really go much more than that in that particular issue there. But, uh, you know, because I always used to say, what would be the difference? It was five million nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five thousand, for example. So you're missing five people for the number. What's the big deal with something like that? Why does it got to be this number? But, you know, you know, Adam, and this is where we can speak safely. I was just listening the other day and there was a Jewish man speaking about that there was so little education in America about the Holocaust. And he said, and the six million Jews that died. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna tackle this from a different standpoint. So I wrote him myself personally, and I wrote him and I said, well, you know, 
I have I have to take issue with this. I said you make it such a big issue that the Americans are not educated on the, the Holocaust. I said I think the Americans are very well educated on the Holocaust and what happened. I said, but what troubles me is the fact that we have 66 million dead Christians from uh, from Stalin, and there's nothing said about what happened to them. There's no it, memorial memorializing it, them. Th- th- that's true. That's true. And uh, you don't have your career destroyed if you're associated with uh, the hammer and sickle as well but you said 66 million so 66 plus 6 that you're saying that there's 666 million wait no 66 thousand six million yeah. right no that was the christians that were killed that's how many were estimated i think like 66 million or 65 million mm-hmm. that were killed in, in in the soviet union but in in the uh holocaust uh, you, you're not even allowed to mention that. You're not allowed to say that there was less than six million. Uh, and, and I know people, I've got a good friend of mine that uh, in Germany that just mentioned it one day, uh, disputed the numbers, and he give his, uh, from the data that he had, he gave the numbers that he had on this, and uh, immediately the German government came after him to put him in prison uh, for for even questioning the number. I mean, let's look at it like this. Let's make it simple for everybody. The scripture in the Bible says, who can make war with the beast? All right? That should answer it. If you've got a nation as small as Israel is, and if you dare question something even from from a from an academic standpoint, or a or, or from challenging something based on facts, as the numbers of the, of the deaths. It's, there's you know I don't deny the fact that the we know the Holocaust happened. We know that there were Jews that died, but there were also other people that died as well in the Holocaust. It wasn't just the Jewish people, you know. And as far as the numbers, with, okay, with the use of the of the term, it, it implies that it has like a biblical meaning. Like this was necessary to fulfill the biblical requirements in a way of, of atonement in the, the redemption, How the rebirth of the land. All right. But see, that's Talmudic and it's yeah. not biblical. And that's the whole point. But you have to remember, as an Orthodox Jew, the Talmud has more authority than the Bible itself. All right. And that's that's from some most rogue passage you could ever imagine and i forget the exact passage it's at i believe it's in the book of numbers and it's some off the wall quote from the bible now not the quote from the bible is off the wall but the way that it's applied that gives these rabbis so much power that whatever they wrote in their talmud whether it be the babylonian the, the jerusalem talmud every rabbi that writes in these commentaries their words have more power than the torah so in their mind it is the torah and if it's the Torah and they prophesy that this number has to be six million Jews had to die, then they're going to make sure it happens. Just like that they that there there is believed that there is still another six million that have to die. Uh, and it's got to be in Israel when they're already a state. There's got to be so many millions that die there. They've got to have so many millions that die in America and so many millions that die in another country as well. I forget yeah, what the, the there's, there's also prophecies about two thirds and like one dying, one being brought and refined through the fire. I cover all that in, in a it's up on no more news.org in the featured videos it's a burnt offering ritual if you guys want to see more on that that's a good segue to uh to uh, our our last topic here i wanted to play this go through this clip of this rabbi talking about uh jacob and esau and gog and magog and, and so uh if if you uh have a comment just go ahead and and uh and interrupt them and i'll pause it but i just wanted to play through this and get your thoughts and then we'll uh, wrap okay. it up because I know you're a few hours ahead of me right now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Esav and Yaakov. So Ishmael and the Arabs are the brothers. And Esav is the Nutsrim. Once again, Esau is the Christians. Edom. 
Yeah. I've, I add that to the collection of rabbis saying that Christians in the West is Edom and that Edom's going to be destroyed and that Esau is going to serve them. Well, this is exactly what the whole thing is with about the Noahide laws. Mm -hmm. This is to put those Christians that survive what's going to happen here in America, Adam, are going to become slaves. And what's interesting is that some Christians have already chosen to be slaves and they have no idea. When they are supporting the secular state of Israel, you know, Adam, let me, let me put it like this. And I have to ask this to every person that listens to your channel, especially if they happen to be Christian. If you were living in Israel 2,000 years ago, what side would you have been on? Are you going to be on the side of Jesus and, the, and those apostles, the ones that were despised and hated by the state of Israel 2,000 years ago? Or are you going to be for those Talmudic rabbis 2,000 years ago that persecuted and killed the Christians? All right, now, put yourself today, take ministers today, take Christians today, or even if you're not a Christian, and what side are you on right now? I know many ministers that I could name, I won't do it, but I could name that have, are so sucked up to a bunch of Talmudic rabbis right now that bring about the persecution, as this man just says here, and Esau is the Christians, Edom, and we already know what they're going to do with them, but yet you support a secular state that's worse than America, and when it comes to the believers in Israel, you hardly even open your mouth about it. What about Palestinian Christians? You won't even stand up for them when they don't when they won't even when they cut their power off and they take away their water and everything else. They're just dirt to you. So if you're that way, if all you can do is see nothing but oh Israel, 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 Israel. I used to be there, so I understand. I really do. Because you believe that there's prophecy speaking about their coming. No, there's one prophecy for Israel right now, and that is to get them to see Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And if you're not doing that and you're sucking up to a secular state and a bunch of Talmudic rabbis and then spitting on those poor Christians that do live in that country, then you would have been on the same side that crucified Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, and you're doing it today. Well put. I agree. And, and to the people that may say, like, oh, well, what's wrong? Why are you against peace in the Middle East? Why are you against the, the three Abrahamic religions, uh, you know, coexisting together? It, I, I'm not. I, I don't like all of those wars and fighting over religion differences in the Middle East. But at the same time, we know what their agenda is here. And it's, it's ultimately basically world control from Jerusalem with using religion, the Noahide laws, and then... Uh, you know, technology, advanced technology that they're trying to set up from from Israel and, you know, controlling the powerful countries with trade and stuff. That's exactly right, Adam. And, uh, you know, and for the same for me, I have been against these wars and everything that's been going on from the very beginning. Well, I shouldn't say from the beginning. I had to wake up with Syria. I didn't realize that what was happening to Syria was a crime. You know, I mean, I should know it's a crime against humanity, but everybody had us, you know, we were so convinced by mainstream media that Bashar al-Assad was this cruel, evil guy gassing his own people. It took a Turkish parliament member to expose the evidence that it was Turkey themselves working with the CIA, smuggling in the sarin gas, which, by the way, later on Twitter, that CIA guy got blasted by one of the guys that knew that was working as a security detail back during the Benghazi affair. And he says, why don't we really tell the world what we were doing in Benghazi? They were smuggling the sarin gas out of there under Hillary and shipping it through Turkey and using it, as Aaron Erdem said, the Turkish parliament member, and using it on those poor little children over there to make it look like that Assad was so bad, to galvanize the support of the Americans so we could go fight Syria and, and arm all the proxies. But, you know, it was the United States, it was Israel. And by the way, when they talk about, well, Damascus has got to be destroyed. It's in the prophecy of Isaiah 17. In verse 10 of Isaiah 17, if you read it in the Hebrew language, God holds both Christians and Jews responsible for the destruction of Damascus. And he says you did it because you, uh, I think in English you say, planted pleasant slips. 
In other words, they armed a faction to go against the country, and God was not pleased with neither the Christians nor the Jews for doing that. So that's what woke me up. And so, no, I'm for peace, but it's obvious that Israel and the United States are not for peace. These people would have been much better off if we just left them alone. I know it's like they're the ones that have been uh, Trump joked in this in the video when he gave him the key to the uh, Netanyahu, the key to the White House. He goes, e even Bibi's tired of war, even Netanyahu's tired. Oh, and the, they all laugh. It's them, been them going to war with each other. And now all of a sudden they just to de declare, OK, we're all about peace now. Peace. We say peace. We're all having peace and we're going to hold hands and sing Kumbaya. It's just like, it's it's also scripted, and I like the way you framed it, that they're trying to make everything look like it's fulfilling prophecy so that they can dominate the world, con control the world. That's exactly right, Adam. And, I, you know, you did an awesome job on this key that uh, Trump gave over to, uh, uh, to Netanyahu. What a disgrace. What a disgrace. But then again, you know, let's face it. I guess it was nothing new. ADL yeah. and all these other organizations had a key to our politics for many years already. Yeah, they're just making it official. Okay, here, let's let's continue on yeah. with this a little bit more. Just getting good with Esau and the Christians. Which, it should be so simple to explain to Christians. They believe all Gentiles and the Christian West is Esau, and then they say that Esau and Edom is going to be destroyed or be their servants. So, and they go along with it. I don't know... It, 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 we need to do a video on your channel or something when you get back and, and talk about and, and get Baldwin and, and Pike and, and more of these guys on to wake up these Christians about what they have, what the Jews have planned for them. Here we continue on. Edom. Shnei ele rashe umot haolam. Zeh harashim. Misham ha zeh itkhil. Lachel derech hav katuv. She. Vani lo navi. Ani katuv bazor. Lifnei ha geula. התעוררו מלחמות בעולם בין אדום לישמעאל, לא כתוב איזה אומות. אתם רואים מה קורה היום בעולם? נוצרים, היום יש את פוטין טראמפ, שזה נוצרים, אדום, נגד, שבע מדינות איסלאמיות, חכו זה רק התחלה. התעוררו מלחמות קשות מאוד, לא בין מדינה למדינה, אלא בין אדום לישמעאל. זה מה ש... אנחנו ברוך השם במצב <laughs> מתקדם של התהליכים האלה. רגע, אנחנו במרכז. He wants major wars to happen before the messianic age with Ishmael, which is the Arabs, and the son of the, I guess, the bastard son of Abraham and, and Esau. They ask, who's in the middle of this? And he says very proudly and laughs, we are in the middle. He admits that they're basically instigating Gog and Magog to play yes. out prophecy. And, and I'm, I'm doing actual research on Gog and Magog as of right now. Uh, so I'm not going to go too deep on that particular part. But I will say this. They are definitely, when they talk about Ishmael and, uh, and Esau, especially if they type the Christians as being Esau. We might could argue that actually the Pharisees were uh, were Esau's line, uh, if you want to go back and look at this from a historical standpoint, which would put modern day Judaism as Esau. But mm -hmm. uh, I would argue this here and, and say that they have had to go a long way to instigate all America's wars on the Middle East to create the scenario. If you, as we know, General Wesley Clark said seven nations would be taken down in five years. Of course, the timeline is off, but not the nations. And the United States has played a heavy role in bringing down these nations. You know, you're looking at Libya, you're looking at Egypt, looking at uh, Syria, Iraq, Iran soon to be, uh, Lebanon, all these nations, and we have been funding and fighting all these wars. So has the United States, thanks to Israel, created a quagmire of a mess with the Arabic nations? Yes, we have. And uh, so I can see it is just a matter of time, and I'm sure probably somewhere along the way with Turkey, between Turkey and Iran, that ought to be just about enough 
Israel probably have created just enough tensions between all of the all these nations in the United States to where they're going to unleash whatever they can on America next. Well, we could be seeing like the the peace covenant, and then now they're trying to set up for you know they say that they have peace, but then Gog and Magog breaks out, and and this is what they feel is instrumental before you know they chant we want Moshiach now they need a major war and they need to destroy Amalek before the Moshiach can come and they can rebuild their temple with one-third of Jews in Israel dying and that's what's really sad I, I have been saying to the Jewish people in America do not do Aliyah don't go back to Israel don't go to home to Israel you know listen stay in America you're much safer because right now, there are some very sinister people over there that want to see a third third of the Jews in Israel dead to fulfill their little prophecies in the Zohar and, and, and Talmud. And like John Hagee and these, these Christian Zionists, that they pretend like they love the Jews, but really they believe that they will be... Uh, they will be, what, killed and convert or kill as well, right? Exactly. So... And they're, yet they're like cheerleaders out there. Come on back. We want to make sure you all die. Come on back. I mean, how demented do you have to get? I don't know. Pretty, pretty demented. Here, let's finish up here. I think we got another maybe minute of that, and we'll and then we'll get you out of here. תחפ תבינו אנחנו מאוד במרכז כי כתוב החפץ חיים אמר שמלחמו זה בזה במלחמה שלא נירת אוד בעולם כל כך הרבה דם. ואז הם יעצרו באמצע, יגידו, רגע, הכל בגלל היהודים. רגע, 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 רגע. אני אומר, מה חפץ חיים אמר? נא לא להתפרץ, בבקשה. הוא אמר שהם יעצרו באמצע, יגידו, רגע, הכל בגלל היהודים. בואו, תמיד הכל בגלל... It's funny, he's saying that they're in the middle of it. It's their prophecy that it has to happen. And then everybody's going to stop in the middle and say, hey, it's, it's the Jews behind this war. <laughs> How funny is that? It is very funny. Oh, gosh. בואו, תמיד הכל בגלל היהודים. נשפך כוס חלב בבייג'ינג בסין, איזה יהודי גרם לזה בטוח. אז גם זה בגלל היהודים. אז הם ירצו לבוא עלינו, אבל השנאה תהיה כל כך גדולה שהם לא יצליחו. שהם... So they're dividing, conquering the world. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and, but the thing is, is even though he says it and makes it like a joke, like, okay, all the blame goes on the Jews and everything, but unfortunately, why are we in the Middle East in the first place? I mean, cannot anybody go back and look at Netanyahu screaming and saying that uh, Iraq, Iraq, Iraq had uh, yellow cake and we had to go to war because they got nuclear weapons when they didn't? And now they're screaming that Iran has, uh, that they, they could get nuclear weapons. Iran's already got nuclear weapons. And, and, and the thing is, is that they're, they're making it, they're doing all these sanctions against the nation. They've already got it. Right. This is nothing new. But yet all that intelligence is, is suppressed. They don't want the world to know it. Why? They're going to use it against Israel is why. And, because, and the reason why they suppress it is because they're provoking them to attack because they want them to attack because they need that prophecy fulfilled. So they provoke Iran. They keep killing all these proxies over there uh, in, in, in Syria and near the border of Iraq, hoping that Iran will strike. That's all they need, one good bomb, because they know Iraq has, excuse me, Iran has a nuclear device. You know, and they that, want to see a, it hit That's high. an important concept that you pointed out, is that they provoke uh, a reaction and this is what they do with with Esau as well they their their behaviors and their 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 vicious circle pro provokes and incites a reaction and then they go oh this is you know we're being persecuted uh once again Blanche TV says that this guy's inciting war then complaining his people will be blamed it's exa exactly what he's fetish he's fantasizing about the war and then going oh and then they're gonna blame us for it but we're in the middle of it it's just completely right? insane. And here's, here's what's really ironic, though. Think about this as well, Adam. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the secular Jews and the homosexual community in Israel, predominantly living in Tel Aviv, Haifa, places like this, and yet I knew 
personally, there is a mission going on by the Israeli government right now. It's a secret mission going on. They have been going to the ultra-Orthodox communities throughout Europe, telling them, come back to Israel. Even if you have to live in a tent, we'll put you in the mountains. They're bringing back yeah. the religious and putting them in the mountains, but they're leaving the secular on the coastline because they know this is where it's going to happen. So they make it look like, Netanyahu makes it look like he cares about the gay community. But after all, when one of these devices gets dropped or a chemical weapon bomb gets dropped by Iran on Israel when they've had enough, they're going to be able to serve two purposes. One, they'll say, well, we had a one third of the Jews died. And secondly, they won't say it publicly, but they will feel that they got rid of all the bad bad blood in mm -hmm. Israel. But this just, like judgment. the Rebbe said about World War II, he said that there, those were the six million souls were reincarnated sinner, sinning souls that needed to atone. There, and there you go. So now you know the mindset. So this is what's going to happen to these people here. So regardless, you know, and I, I'm not saying that I condone one way or the other as far as uh, the, the, the life of this community, but still you're dealing with human beings. Human beings are human beings. And the thing is, is to put them in harm's way intentionally, knowing, and then take and do these secret missions to bring back the ultra-religious Jews, and you know you're placing them in a place that you feel like is a safer place when the attack comes, and then you put the ones that you don't like because they don't support your agenda, knowing that you're putting them right in harm's way. What kind of government is that? Right. I think this is about the end of this here. <laughs> ואז הם ימשיכו להילחם, ובסוף כן יבואו 70 אומות ביחד. גוג ומגוג, בגימטריה 70, כולם יבואו לפה. ואנחנו לא צריכים לעשות שום דבר. וגם לא לפחד. זה הכל כתוב בטלת ואליהו. תראו שהכל מתנקז לכיוון הזה. אוקיי, זה היה... ואין פה חבאד.אורג גם, ואומר, אידאם ואישמל יבואו להתחיל נגד אחד כשהם חושבים שלהם הם חושבים שלהם. אוהב יבואו להתחיל אותם. So they believe that we're going to fight each other and then we're going to fight them or that we're going to fight them and then we're going to destroy each other. Basically, they believe we're going to destroy one another. Oh. And if you think about it, though, look at what look at what they did when they had these war, not only the wars in Syria that caused all the refugees that ended up in Europe. But also they created all this, uh, these problems down in Africa and sent all these ref refugees. And, and, and it's funny, the refugees are not families. These are always men, majority, predominantly, are men fleeing these countries, Muslim men, going into Europe. Why? They're going to do a war. Oh, that's they're, destroying they're Edom. That perfect segue yes. for the next clip. It's the end of days. You're going to need the iron of... Esav, which represents Edom, which is the West, uh, Europe, and the Americas, to get intermixed with Yishmael, which is basically Arabs and, uh, and Muslims. How in the world was this ever going to happen if not for this refugee crisis? At the end of days, you're going to have this intermixing between Esav, Edom, which is the West, and the East, which is the Muslims and, uh, um, and, and the Arabs making this through this influx into the world. And they're going to have children, you know, I don't want to say by the dozens, but they're going to have a far larger birth rate than the indigenous people there. And they're going to sort of conquer by number. And there are many different sources for this. Um, one of them in, uh, in Yehazrel, chapter 14, and many other sources as far as this is concerned, where it's mentioned very, very um, vividly what will happen to the Jews and what will happen to Yerushalayim and what will happen to the world at that time, where there will be many, many people killed and so on and so forth. So the idea of having these refugees come into Europe, it's no longer a matter of whether it's right or wrong. It's just simply fulfillment of what it was meant to be all along. This is the fulfillment of you know, the Rehazal and the prophecies. This has to happen, and this is just another sign that we are nearing, you know, the completion of this tikkun of the entire world. Le Mashiach viendra que quand Edom, l'Europe, la chrétienté sera totalement tombée. Donc je vous pose la question, c'est une bonne nouvelle que l'Islam envahisse l'Europe C'est une excellente nouvelle, ça annonce l'année de Mashiach. Excellente nouvelle. So, they want to destroy Edom, which they clearly say is the Christian West, America, Russia, Europe. 
And they're going to do that with Ishmael, with the Arabs. They say it's a good thing. It means Messiah is coming. This is weird, though. Uh, do, are you aware of sources for being conquered by numbers and intermixing together? I, I have never seen the, the source for that. I haven't either on the intermixing, but I do know it's interesting, though, because the Muslims, many times when uh, I lived in Europe, they were talking about intermixing into the races there. Uh, so, But where the source may be on that, I'm not really sure. They promote uh, it in the media a lot. Yeah, they, I do know that I was told recently uh, right out of the Pentagon to keep a close eye on Rome and Syria, or Damascus. I was told that recently. And, uh, and I'm also aware that, that, that the Vatican is actually uh, arming both sides of the conflict in Syria right now. So That's the I don't MO, know they, always, always uh, arming both sides, controlling factions on both sides, controlling yes. the whole dialectic, the whole theater. Yep, and now they're saying that the Messiah can't come until Esau and Ishmael destroy one another. Uh, and there is, uh, in the news in Israel, they're saying that the Messiah is going to reveal itself in 2021. So we can, we can only imagine what's on the agenda for the United States and Europe now over the next uh, 12 months then. And of course, we can see in America, that's going to begin very, very soon. Uh, and I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see how that, how that plays out. Well, I, I agree with you. I think for sure Trump's going to win. I think we're going to see this Zionist agenda intensify like we haven't seen anything yet. And if you thought the first four years was Trump on his knees for Netanyahu, just imagine what it's going to look like in the next term. And then, you know, they're already positioning and grooming Kushner to to follow, you know, to, to continue the peace accords. You know, they're going to run him and Ivanka. And who knows what they're gonna, what's going to play out. That's what, if, if that comes to that, that's when I'm going to say, of course, they're going to be saying Kushner's the most Shiak. How could they not? I agree, Adam. I agree. And I, I can see that certainly playing out in the not so distant future. All right, Steve. Stephen, Ben Noon, I appreciate you coming on to discuss all this with me. Um, you're, uh, how, how, when do you get off of this two week ban on the main channel? I think uh, either tomorrow or the day after. Uh, so we've been we've reset up on brand new tube Israeli News Live, D Live Israeli News Live, <laughs> Patreon Israeli News Live, everywhere Israeli News Live practically. And Yana's on band too on her Rise Up Children of God. Uh, hers is going to end I think maybe towards the end of the week, but I think tomorrow either tomorrow night or Tuesday we'll be able to come back on again. And and I've had to move a lot of content to unlisted. Uh, because uh, I feel like they're, they're searching, you know, after the attack they did on our website today, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're re as soon as we pop up, I think they're going to try to take us down again immediately. You're not making the, uh, the end timers in Israel very happy with your work. That's, that's for sure. 75, almost 75 million views on Israeli news live and the backup channel to follow is also fact news network to find yes. Steven and Yana's work thanks for coming on steve i appreciate it thank you adam we appreciate it as well so uh blessings to you and 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 all those that you love as well take care adam thank you take care and you can stay on i'm gonna wrap it up everybody like share subscribe give us a thumbs up to try to help with the algorithm let us know what you think in the comments um no more news .org. that's where you can get in contact support get the t-shirts follow on all the alternative links all there at nomorenews.org. Everybody, thank you for watching and have a nice night. See you soon.